Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. And today is our travel unit. It's also our all English lecture, so no other languages, please. No matter how hard you yell at your radio in another language besides English, it's not going to affect us at all. We're still going to be speaking in English here in the American variety of English, to be more specific. But we're actually going to a country whose native language is not English. It actually happens to be Greek. And we're going to Greece. Remember, Greece is the country. Greek is the language, and the capital city of Greece is Athens. Athens, Greece. I've never been there myself. I've seen lots of pictures. Their weather is very similar to the state that I grew up in, and that's Arizona.、It、gets very, 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 very hot there, and not very humid. So. You know, if you like kind of desert temperatures, it's a place to go. Their water is beautiful. The guys are good looking for the women out there, and their food is really tasty too. Indeed, and、uh, so if you've never been to Greece before and you'd like to learn more about it, today is the program for you. So let's get to it. Let's read the entire contents of today's lesson now one time. You pinch yourself as you take in the Acropolis from your taxi window, your eyes widening in fascination. The massive archaeological site above is home to one of the world's most iconic monuments. Athens has over 3,400 years of history, and even its metro system includes galleries of ancient artifacts. You'll also want to embrace other famous Athenian traits: warm weather, warmer hospitality. And a renowned food and drink culture, the city gets over 300 days of sunshine per year. So exploring the famously friendly streets and eats serves as a perfect introduction. You can wander the city while indulging in small plates of food called maze, local wine, and markets. Later, you could either strap on your most practical footwear to climb the Acropolis. Or kick off those shoes to soak up the sun on the 50 kilometers of coastal retreat. There's a lot to explore, but Athens is remarkably compact. The archaeological zone is designed for pedestrians. So are the labyrinthine streets, traditional bazaars, historic squares, museums, and hilltops. Some must-sees include the Parthenon, dedicated to Athena, the goddess of wisdom, and the city's patron. Much higher, like Habitus Hill, grants a priceless viewpoint. Take the funicular up to feast your eyes on the Temple of Zeus, the Panathenaic Stadium, and the Hellenic Parliament. After conquering those heights, consider visiting the Archaeological Museum of Athens, one of the biggest in the world and home to a wealth of Greek culture dating from the prehistoric era onward. Athens dazzles more than 4.5 million tourists annually. It's no wonder the ancient cultural norm of philizenia, or love of strangers, still holds strong. With so much to offer, Athens is sure to continue being an essential tourist attraction for centuries to come. Well, this month we're traveling to the great country of Greece. And we're going to see Athens, which is its capital city. I know folks here get a little confused about the adjectives for some countries and the the noun for the country. I hear a lot of people say, "I'm going to German." <laughs> yeah, so for some reason, that's the one they make the mistake the most. The、uh, most,、German. I know, German. Germany. What did the Nazis do to people? I don't know. They they got the pronunciation all crazy here, but that's true. So you've heard it as well. It's the one that I I just laugh at a lot. But remember, the country is Greece. And the adjective is Greek. Greek.、Um, I said before we started, at least before Tom read the article, that I love Greek food. I've had a lot of Greek food. It's really good. I think that people here would like it as well. So we're going to be talking about this wonderful place. There are a lot of historic places that you can go see. Wow, this place existed even before the castles in Europe. So if you want to see some real old history, this is where you want to go. That's right, and of course, if you go back in time, you might see some guys walking around in togas there. But oh, I'm thinking of Rome there. But、uh, Greece was part of the Roman Empire at one time. So if you go to Athens, 
you need to pinch yourself as you take in the Acropolis from your taxi window.、Yeah. Your eyes widening in fascination. Pinch yourself. Why would you want to do that unless you're、uh, a glutton for punishment or somebody who really likes pain or something like that? Because we say that if you are experiencing something so cool, you think you might be dreaming. So you pinch yourself to see if you're really awake. Right, and you'll feel the pain, and that will tell you. Oh yes, I am awake. I'm not dreaming because you've only seen the Acropolis in tourist posters or pictures、yeah. in a textbook. Now you're seeing it with your very own eyes, and of course, because you're seeing it with your very own eyes, your eyes are widening. They're getting wider and bigger in fascination. Fascination is the state of being fascinated by something. You are fascinated by the Acropolis, or your eyes are wide. Widening in fascination. Keep feeling fascination, like the old song by the Human League went. Oh yeah, that group Human League. I think they only had one hit. Anyway, the Acropolis guys. If you look it up, it'll be a familiar structure for you. It's kind of falling apart. It's ruins because it was built long ago. But it's described as being a citadel. A citadel is a type of fort or fortress that protects or guards a particular area, and it's really high up on a hill. So I'm sure the soldiers were looking out over into the sea to see who was trying to approach Greece. And、uh, so that they would know how to protect their own people. So that's the Acropolis. Now the next sentence says the massive archaeological site above is home to one of the world's most iconic monuments. When you see this word archaeological, that's a hard one. Archaeological. It's the adjective form of the noun archaeology. Archaeology is the study of human history and also prehistory. Prehistory includes history before we could even read about it, so they didn't really write anything down. And a lot of times, these archaeologists, those are the scientists that study archaeology, they'll dig underneath the ground. To see what they can find, some of the remains of people and、uh, some of their tools that they used in old homes. Sometimes they dig those up underground. Yes, indeed. So the archaeologists who studied archaeology、mm. are going to the archaeological site. So that's what the Acropolis is. It's the home to one of the world's most iconic monuments. If something's iconic, it represents something. It's something you can recognize instantly. An iconic monument here in Taiwan, I guess, would be Taipei 101. It's very iconic of Taipei. That sky tower down in Gaoshong is iconic of、yeah. Gaoshong, etc. And Athens has over 3,400. Hundred years of history—that's a long time—and even its metro system includes galleries of ancient artifacts. Artifacts are. Objects or things from the past that have historical significance,、mm-hmm. and gee, they probably got more artifacts than they know what to do with. So they put them on the walls of the metro stations just to have a place to put them. There are so many of them. <laughs> well, how nice that would be! So you'll also want to embrace other famous、uh, Athenian traits. Athenian is the adjective form of this word, Athens. So if you live in Athens, you're an Athenian. A trait is just a characteristic, something that symbolizes a group of people or even a nation. Some of people's best traits include their ability to to laugh at themselves, so have a sense of humor. You have the trait of being very. Intelligent, you know, there are different types of traits that people have. Well, these are traits of the city of Athens. This is for sure. Warm weather. I would switch that out and just say hot weather, because、mm. it gets really hot there. The sun is so bright. So if you do go there, girls, you're going to want to bring your umbrellas, not for the rain, but the sun, and also a lot of sunscreen. They've also got. Warmer hospitality. Hospitality first to the way people welcome you into their home or their country. If you're visiting, are they kind? Do they want to help you? Greece and the Greek people are known for being very warm to visitors, and they have a renowned or very famous, popular food and drink culture.、Uh, their coffee is very unique as well. It's a very strong、uh, tasting type of coffee, but I understand it's really good. I don't drink coffee, but they also. 
have delicious food. Right, and the food, of course, is probably part of the Mediterranean diet there,、mm. which is considered one of the healthiest diets in the world. So go there, get some recipes, and come back to Taiwan here and live for hundreds of years as a result. <laughs> Now, the city of Athens gets over three hundred days of sunshine per year. We can't say that about good old Taipei here,、no. but、uh, you can say that about Athens. They <laughs> have lots of sunshine there, so exploring the famously friendly streets and eats serves as a perfect introduction. Eats here, we're using that as a noun. Let's go get some eats. It's kind of a slang term. We don't really use it too often, but here we're changing the word eats. Oftentimes in the plural, almost always in the plural,、yeah. means food. Let's go get some food. Yeah,、uh, that would be the first thing I would do there. It really does sound like my home state that I grew up in. We have even more than three hundred days of sunshine per year. So rain where I grew up was amazing. My mom would take a chair and go sit out in the backyard with the rain. We just love rain here. It's a little different. So moving on, you can wander the city while indulging in small plates of food called maize, local wine, and markets. So nowadays,、uh, this trend, food trend, started actually in Spain. They're called small plates, and instead of just ordering one dish and just eating that and getting full, you can share smaller plates of food with friends, especially if you go with a group of friends to a restaurant. So if you indulge in something, you. You really take great delight in something, and also if you indulge in something, you usually do too much of it. You may eat too too much junk food one weekend, or maybe too much pizza or chocolate. You can indulge in too much drinking, and then wake up the next day with a really bad headache because you got drunk. So, this small plates of food here have a Greek. Name for them, and they're called maize. Local wine, you know, every country that produces wine has a little different flavor to it, characteristics, and of course, they have Greek markets, which are fun. Yes, and then there's all these guys wearing those tall black boots, playing their bazookies to kind of create the mood for you while you enjoy the food there, drink the wine, and people watch and stuff like that. Now later, you could either strap on your most practical footwear to climb the Acropolis, or kick off those shoes to soak up the sun on the 50 kilometers of coastal retreat. So this is a choice here. You could either do one or something else. Okay. First of all,、uh -huh. you could either put on your hiking shoes and climb to the Acropolis, or you could go down to the beach. Basically, that's what this sentence here is saying in different kinds of words. First of all, we're describing putting on your hiking boots. We're describing it as strap on your most practical footwear. Uh, practical just means it's very useful. It's very suitable for the situation. And footwear, of course, is anything that you wear on your feet. So here, of course, the writer is referring to hiking shoes or hiking boots. You're going to need those to climb up to the Acropolis. And here we're using the term "strap them on." Usually, you tie your shoes. You put your shoes on and then you tie them. If you strap something on, it's something that will involve straps. Maybe like the old shoes, the ancient Greek. Used to wear their old sandals. Well, a lot of the sandals today have lycra on them, so you don't tie shoelaces. You know they have that really noisy lycra, so it goes not lycra. What is it? It's called uh, uh, yeah, velcro. Velcro lycra is different. Velcro. Yep. Little kids' shoes have Velcro because they can't really tie their shoes when they're very small. Their their fingers aren't very coordinated. Well, you could strap on some sandals that way. Those are very popular too, because you can go out into the water and it won't ruin your shoes if you have some good sandals on. So you want to get some good practical footwear, or you might just want to kick off your shoes to soak up the sun on the fifty kilometers of coastal retreat. Retreat is anywhere you go where you feel like you're away from the city and you're relaxing. People go on retreats when they're on vacation a lot. You might go to a vacation resort. That's a little different, but a retreat is just away from anything causing you a lot of stress and stuff. So it's a coastal retreat. It's a place where you can get away from it all. You could say to kick off your shoes. We use kick off to talk about starting things too, like a game is going to. Be they're going to kick off the game pretty soon, or they're going to kick off the Olympics next Thursday, or something like. We're going to kick off our campaign, our marketing campaign. Here, you're literally 
kicking off your shoes, taking them off. Yep, head down to the beach and do some sunbathing. That's what you do when you soak up the sun. You go sunbathing. If you're into that sort of thing, I don't really like to go to the beach myself.、Hmm. I can never wash all of the sand off my feet. It always ends up in my shoes and my underwear and whatever. I just hate that stuff.、Yeah. So I would definitely put on my hiking boots. And hike up to the Acropolis, and I suppose you probably get a nice view of the city from there as well. Okay, that brings us to the midway point in today's lesson. Let's take a break right now, but、uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. We're in our travel unit today, and we're really discovering Athens,、uh, the city that is very famous in the country of Greece. If you've ever seen a picture, you've probably noticed a lot of white roofs and blue homes. They've got a lot of blue tile there too, and then that sea is so beautiful. The water there is so clean and beautiful. A lot of those buildings have white roofs to reflect the sun off of it. It is so hot. That you wouldn't want any dark colors like black.、Um, have you noticed, Tom, that here in Taiwan people don't particularly buy a lot of black cars either? Black、mm. absorbs the sun's rays, whereas white reflects it off, so it bounces off that color. In Arizona, where I grew up, nobody would buy a black vehicle. It's way too hot. Well, actually, I've seen quite a few black vehicles in Taiwan, especially the B cars. They always seem to choose black as their color. The B car. Yeah, I guess it makes them look like they're important or something. I don't know, but yeah, black or dark colors do. Not as hot, yeah.、Uh, it does absorb heat, and white、uh, reflects it a little bit here.、Yeah. And、uh, that, of course, is very iconic of Greece. Those white structures, especially on those offshore islands、mm-hmm. that people go to. Well, there's a lot to explore, but、uh, Athens is remarkably compact. Compact here just means very small. Everything's close together. I suppose you could use that word to describe. Taipei, everything's very compact, everything's convenient, very close together, etc., etc.、Uh, we do have cars that are very small that would use this adjective, but. We change the pronunciation there. A compact car. We wouldn't say a compact car, even though I guess that's correct. But nobody says it that way. I'd like to buy a compact car, maybe one by Honda or something like that. Yeah. If you ever go abroad, or even if you rent a car here in Taiwan, of course you'd be speaking Chinese. But if you go to a place and are renting a car where they speak English, you'll want to ask for a compact car. It's a little less expensive. That's when we use it the most. Actually, if we're buying a car, renting a car, compact. The archaeological zone or area is designed for pedestrians. If you're a pedestrian, guys, it means you get around by walking. We've got a lot of pedestrian sidewalks here in Taiwan where bicycles and scooters aren't supposed to be there. At the same time, I've noticed that people are. A little casual about obeying that rule. Sometimes we have to share our sidewalks here with lots of scooters and bicycles. So anyway, a pedestrian is someone who is just walking outside to get from one place to another. And it says here, so are the labyrinthine streets. Labyrinthine is an adjective of the word labyrinth. A labyrinth is like a maze. A maze is something where it's just really involved and. Not easy to get from one place to another. It's like going, you know, and getting lost in a maze. Have you seen those? Sometimes、uh, they,、sure. sometimes they have them in cornfields. I've seen them there where they actually have places. It's kind of fun if you go and are lost in a maze. So these streets aren't straightforward. They don't go west and east and north and south. They kind of curve around and around. Kind of like the alleys in Wanhua here in Taiwan,、yeah. they don't really have a north-south grid to、True. them like the rest of the city does. We've also got traditional bazaars. That's kind of a traditional market, basically. We've got historic squares or plazas. There probably is a fountain there、mm. with people sitting around enjoying each other's company. We've got museums, of course, and of course, also there are hilltops,、uh, not big mountains, but hills that you can sort of go to the top of and. 
get a nice view of certain parts of the city. I guess Athens is a very hilly city, just like San Francisco or something、mm. like that. Now, some must sees or things that you have to see. Must see is often in the、uh, singular. Hey, a must see in Taiwan is Taroko Gorge. You've got to go、yeah. there and check it out. Well, in Athens here, some must sees include the Parthenon. Which is another kind of ancient temple. It's dedicated to Athena, the goddess of wisdom, and also the city's patron, which is kind of like the protector of the city. Yeah, they have、uh, gods in different religions.、Uh, the Catholics have patron saints,、uh, but this、uh, is the Greek. Form of their religion, of course. So they've got the goddess of wisdom, the city's patron. She kind of watches over the city, protects it, that sort of thing. Much higher, you can go to a place called Lycobatus, Lycobatus Hill. I hadn't heard of this place before, and it says here it grants or gives you a priceless viewpoint. It's nice if you can get up high enough to give you a good view of the surrounding area.、Um, I like to go up on the hill here in Taipei and get a good look at the city below. And then you can take the funicular up、mm, to、yeah. feast your eyes. It's kind of a railway, guys.、Uh, we don't use this word much.、Um, I had to check it out myself. So it's a, a railway, and you can feast your eyes on the Temple of Zeus. If you feast your eyes on something. You can also say feast your eyes upon something. Either word is fine.、It、just means you really enjoy what you're looking at. It's a beautiful sight. Yep,、uh, look at it and check it out. It's the Temple of Zeus,、mm. and we've got the Panathenaic Stadium. A、uh, stadium, of course, is where a sports competition takes place. We've also got the Hellenic Parliament,、mm. which is probably some kind of government house where they have、uh, meetings with all the representatives from different regions of Greece there. And after conquering those heights, the tall areas there, the hills, consider visiting the Archaeological Museum of Athens. Which is one of the biggest in the world and home to a wealth of Greek culture dating from the prehistoric era onward. Sounds like a good place to go in Athens. Is if you stay there during the summer, it's、mm. quite hot there, so、uh, you might want to go someplace that has air conditioning. So yes, consider visiting this museum. Think about it. Take it into consideration. Go to this museum of archaeology, and it's one of the biggest in the world about archaeology and. And of course, it's got a wealth of Greek culture. A wealth of just means a large quantity, a large amount of something, and all this stuff there dates from the prehistoric era onward. Prehistoric means. Period of history that wasn't written down when they didn't have written language, they could only kind of guess at what happened back in those days. Ancient history. Yeah, from what I understand from the books I've read,、uh, the Greek folks there currently are very warm and welcoming. It's a nice place to go. Also, if you have been keeping track of the news, you know that about a decade ago they had real financial problems, and they still are suffering a lot. So, if you go there, your vacation's not going to be quite as expensive. Say, if you went just to Europe, like you know London or France, things like that, it's just a little cheaper. There, because they really do want more tourists there to come visit their country. It'll help their economy. I would also be careful about pickpockets. Perhaps there are probably lots of desperate people wanting to pick on foreign tourists and get some money from them. Or there might be people who won't leave you alone. They keep pestering you to buy this souvenir or go to this restaurant or something. So be aware there. I guess they're still in financial dire straits there, and so be careful there. But still, you're probably going to have a pretty good. Time there, and here in the following paragraph, it says Athens dazzles more than 4.5 million tourists annually. So every year, 4.5 million tourists go there, and they are dazzled by the city of Athens with all of those wonderful sights, the food, the drink, the hospitality, all that fun stuff. And the word dazzle here just means it just really enlightens you, it really excites you. It's a feast for your eyes. It's a Trip that you will never ever forget. You'll be constantly taking pictures. It's no wonder the ancient cultural norm of philoxenia or love of strangers still holds strong. If something holds strong, it just means it's still there. It's 
it's still something that you can find. I just looked up、uh, Xenia, and Xenia is Greek for、um, hospitality. So it's this、uh, philosophy of being good to strangers. So if you're very hospitable,、uh, you welcome people into your home or country.、Um, I think Taiwan's very hospitable too. I think we could say that Philoxenia is real, real strong here in the culture. I've had a lot of people tell me that the folks here are very, very kind. Even if they don't know you, they'll try to help you. So、uh, that's the cultural norm. Something that you can find. As a matter of fact, it's not unusual. It's something that's quite. Ordinary or average to find that the people there are really good to the strangers. With so much to offer, Athens is sure to continue being an essential tourist attraction for centuries to come. It's always been a very popular place for people to take vacations, especially those Europeans that are in、uh, cold areas. I know at least、uh, the folks in England and the UK during the winter they want to go to Greece where they can get some sun because it's really cold in. In, uh, the UK during the winter. Yeah, and of course those despicable Europeans—they somehow end up with six weeks of vacation time every year, where the rest of the world, the Americans, the Taiwanese, are lucky to get one or two weeks a year. I have to tell you, Tom, my job in New York City—I had six weeks vacation. <laughs> Isn't that nice? That's the exception and not the rule.、Mm -hmm. But、uh, what I'm trying to say here is, you can probably expect to see lots of European tourists there、yeah. wandering the streets of Athens、uh, for good deals and stuff like that. Then all. Also, you'll notice that when they speak English with the local Greeks there, you will hear all sorts of accents. Yeah. So you have no more excuses to speak English with foreigners.、Uh, most people in Taiwan are afraid to speak English because they're afraid their accent sounds bad. Listen to all those other accents, and you will realize, huh? Our accent sounds pretty good in comparison. That's right. It's not too bad.、Uh, they do have their own language there in Greece. I'd like to learn a few Greek. Terms and Greek words myself. That would be fun. But this sounds like a wonderful place to check out if you haven't decided where your next vacation destination will be. I I would really encourage you though to go during the cold months and not. Take a trip there during the summer because you would fry. It's so hot. Well, so, on the other hand, of course, if you grew up in Taiwan, you might be used to the heat. Who knows? So、uh, going to Greece, different heat, different heat. It's all. It's a very dry heat. Yeah, that might be the better kind of heat. I don't like the、uh, moisture the, the, or the humid heat. Humid heat that we have here. Yeah. Right. So you'll probably think the heat in、uh, Greece there is nothing. But in any case, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. It's been a good time having you with us, and please join us again next. Next time, for yet another edition of our program from all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye.、Bye.